One minute ago, another earthquake rattled the streets of Patsawali. The ground shook with a deep, thunderous jolt that sent tremors through apartment walls, rattled dishes in cupboards, and woke families from their sleep. This was not the first tremor of the week. It was not even the tenth. Since January 2024, the ground beneath this volcanic caldera has risen nearly 30 centimeters. The Earth is swelling at 15 millimeters per month, sometimes accelerating to 30. Scientists tracking the cap rock, the geological lid holding back the forces below, now confirm it has lost a dangerous fraction of its strength. But this was only the first warning. More than half a million people live directly above this volcanic giant. The caldera sprawls beneath neighborhoods, schools, harbors, and highways. The streets show few obvious signs of what stirs below, yet the data tells a different story. What is driving this relentless unrest? Why have the earthquakes refused to stop? And what happens when the cap rock can no longer hold? The seismic data arriving at the Vesuvius Observatory paints a picture of escalating tension. In 2025 alone, five earthquakes have exceeded magnitude 4.0. On May 13th, a magnitude 4.4 tremor struck near Pozzuoli at a depth of just 2.5 kilometers. 49 earthquakes followed within hours. On June 30th, the strongest event in 40 years hit the Gulf of Pozzuoli, registering magnitude 4.6. These are not isolated events. They arrive in swarms, clusters of tremors so rapid that individual quakes blur together on seismographs. Since 2021, burst-like swarms have become the defining feature of the caldera's unrest. They strike with little warning, pounding the same neighborhoods for hours at a time. What came next shocked even the scientists. A new artificial intelligence model developed by Stanford University and Italy's National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology has revealed the true scale of the seismicity. Traditional methods detected roughly 12,000 earthquakes between 2022 and early 2025. The AI found more than 54,000. Four times as many tremors went unnoticed, hidden in the noise of the data. The AI also exposed something unexpected. Beneath the town of Patsawali, two faults converge in a pattern never before seen so clearly. Encircling the zone of maximum uplift, a thin, well-defined ring fault traces the outline of the caldera's inner structure. Scientists at Italy's National Monitoring Agency were surprised by how sharply the ring appeared. They had expected scattered activity in the south, but the AI revealed concentrated seismicity in the north that no instrument had captured before and the signs were already spreading. These long faults suggest that an earthquake in the magnitude 5 range remains possible. The structures responsible for the shaking are no longer hidden. They now sit in plain view, mapped by algorithms trained on millions of seismic records. The earthquakes are not just shaking the surface. They are weakening the barrier between the forces below and the streets above. At depths between 1 and 2 kilometers, a layer of rock known as the cap rock acts as a geological lid. This fibrous, mineral-reinforced structure traps gas and steam in a pressurized reservoir beneath. Laboratory experiments on rock samples from deep wells reveal the cap rock's unusual properties. It contains microscopic fibers, similar to materials used in advanced engineering, which enhance its ability to stretch and deform without cracking. Under normal conditions, these fibers allow the caldera to experience substantial uplift while accumulating strain energy. But the ground had one more secret. New research shows that repeated seismic stress is degrading this barrier. When fluid pressure in the reservoir rises, the cap rock begins to fracture. Each quake opens new pathways for steam and gas to escape. Permeability has doubled in some zones, allowing hot fluids to push closer to the surface. Scientists describe Compi for Gray as a perfect storm of geology. The cap rock's ability to self-heal by sealing cracks through hydrothermal reactions works in tandem with slow rainfall seepage to recharge and pressurize the reservoir. Over time, these processes build pressure while reducing effective stress, ultimately triggering seismicity. When the rock finally fractures, liquid water flashes to steam, accelerating reservoir depletion and redistributing stress both downward and outward. 
This stress migration propagates from the cap rock to the gas-enriched reservoir below, triggering deeper and larger magnitude earthquakes. The system is not static. It is evolving. The ground beneath Pozzuoli has been rising for two decades. Since 2005, the total uplift at Rione Terra, the point of maximum deformation, has reached approximately 1.5 meters. That is higher than the peak of the 1982-84 Brady seismic crisis, which forced the evacuation of 40,000 residents. GPS stations and satellite radar track the deformation in real time. The uplift follows a bell-shaped pattern centered just southeast of the historic Rione Terra district. In some months, the ground rises steadily at 15 millimeters. In others, it accelerates to 30. The rate slowed after March 25, but has not stopped. The consequences are visible on every street. Sidewalks crack and buckle. Water mains strain under shifting soil. Gas lines flex at joints designed for stability, not motion. Along the coast, the shoreline has shifted as the seabed rises, leaving fishing boats stranded on exposed rock. But this was only the beginning. At the port of Pozzuoli, ferry ramps no longer align with the docks. The ground has risen so much that vehicles struggle to disembark. In March 2025, authorities announced emergency measures, including a temporary bridge and floating pontoons to restore access. The port is a critical lifeline for passenger and freight traffic to the islands of Ischia and Prochita. Its disruption ripples outward, delaying shipments, stranding commuters, and straining the local economy. Infrastructure damage from Bradyseism is not new. In the 1970s and 1980s, ground uplift cracked buildings and forced mass evacuations. But the current crisis has added new stress to systems already weakened by decades of deformation. Roads, utilities, and emergency routes all sit atop a landscape that refuses to stay still. The alert system for Campi Flagrei operates on a four-color scale, green, yellow, orange, and red. Since 2012, the caldera has remained at yellow, indicating heightened activity requiring careful monitoring. In late 2025, authorities introduced a new sublevel, Phase 2 of Yellow, to reflect intensifying unrest without triggering a formal escalation. The decision sparked immediate controversy. Critics accused officials of inventing a category that has no legal basis, a dark yellow that acknowledges danger without accepting the obligations of orange. Behind the scenes, internal discussions revealed competing pressures. Scientists urged caution. Regional administrators worried about economic disruption. Business leaders opposed measures that might alarm tourists or depress property values. The result is public confusion. Residents do not know whether to prepare for evacuation or continue daily routines. The same official bulletins that confirm rising uplift and intensifying seismicity also reassure that no eruption is imminent. The phrase, under constant monitoring, appears in every statement. Yet the monitoring itself has suffered gaps. In early 2024, several stations around the Solfatara crater went offline for weeks at a time. Technicians cited geothermal damage and budget shortfalls. The data gaps coincided with periods of rapid change. And the pattern continues. Across the caldera, a cycle of repair and rupture plays out. Workers patch cracks in roads. Vents reopen overnight. Steaming fissures appear in sidewalks and parking lots, sometimes meters from the last repair. It is as though the earth has decided that human fixes are pointless. In October 2024, authorities staged the largest volcanic risk exercise in the region's history. XC Flegre 2024 tested the evacuation procedures outlined in the National Emergency Plan. More than 700 civil protection operators, 1,000 volunteers, and over 1,500 citizens participated. The drill simulated the assisted removal of residents from the red zone, the area most exposed to pyroclastic flows in the event of an eruption. The red zone encompasses approximately half a million people across the municipalities of Pozzuoli, Bacoli, Monte de Procida, Quarto, and parts of Naples. 
In a full evacuation, these residents would travel by bus, train, and ferry to twinned regions across Italy. The plan assumes a 72-hour warning window, 12 hours to prepare, 48 hours to leave, and a final 12-hour buffer for emergencies. But the drill exposed critical weaknesses. Some routes took 68 to 75 hours in simulation, leaving little margin for error. Bottlenecks formed at ferry terminals and train stations. Hospitals and prisons, which require advanced transfers before a general evacuation, faced logistical delays. Experts warned that phreatic eruptions, explosive events driven by steam rather than magma, may give little or no warning at all. The exercise drew only a fraction of the population it was designed to protect. 1,500 volunteers out of nearly half a million residents is a tiny sample. Authorities acknowledge that participation depends on the state of the volcano. When unrest is high, people pay attention. When it fades from the headlines, they return to daily life. What remains unknown is how the system will perform under real pressure. On a gray morning in March 2022, a dock worker at the port of Pozzuoli arrived to find the ferry ramps hovering above the pier. The gap was too wide for vehicles to cross. The ground had risen so much overnight that the infrastructure no longer fit. He stood at the edge of the quay, staring at the empty space where trucks once rolled off. Passengers waited on the deck above, unable to disembark. Freight sat idle. The ferries that connect the islands to the mainland suddenly had no way to unload. We have broadly season in our blood, a local restaurant owner later told a journalist. We were born here. For weeks, dock workers improvised solutions. They adjusted ramps, repositioned vehicles, and signaled ferries to approach at different angles. But the ground kept rising. Each adjustment became obsolete within days. Eventually, authorities ordered new ramps designed for the changed elevation. The replacements arrived months later, a daily reminder that the port now sits on unstable ground. The economic ripples spread outward. Shipments stalled, commuters missed work, businesses dependent on island tourism saw revenues drop. The port of Pozzuoli is a nerve center for the Gulf of Naples. When it falters, the entire region feels the strain. The population density of the Campi Flagre red zone ranks among the highest of any volcanic hazard area on Earth. More than 80,000 people live in Pozzuoli alone. Across the caldera, the total exceeds half a million. Beyond the red zone, another 800,000 reside in the yellow zone, the area exposed to ash fallout in the event of an eruption. Many families carry generational memories of displacement. In the 1980s, 30,000 residents fled Pozzuoli during the Brody seismic crisis. The Italian state evacuated them to new housing on the outskirts, severing communities that had lived in the historic center for generations. Decades later, some families have never returned. Scientists have long recommended halting new construction in high-risk sectors. Some have proposed converting vulnerable zones into national parks. Instead, permits continue to be approved for hotels, marinas, and residential developments. Political and economic pressures outweigh geological warnings. The mental health toll is rising. Surveys in the affected municipalities report increased rates of anxiety and insomnia. Families check walls for new cracks each morning. They sleep with bags packed near the door. The volcano is not a distant threat. It has invaded their homes, their routines, and their sense of safety. History offers a clear precedent. In 1538, after more than 3,000 years of quiet, the caldera erupted. Monte Nuovo, a new volcanic cone, rose from farmland in just eight days, burying the medieval village of Tripergole and its famous thermal baths. The eruption was preceded by decades of ground uplift, intense earthquake swarms, and dramatic changes to the coastline. On the day before the vent opened, the ground rose by several meters in a matter of hours. The similarities to the current unrest are striking. Scientists have compared the pre-1538 uplift in seismicity with recent episodes and found recurring patterns. 
The 1982-84 crisis produced nearly 3 meters of uplift and over 16,000 earthquakes. It was, in effect, a rehearsal for the same magmatic processes that caused the last eruption. The main difference is that the magma did not reach the surface. More recent events offer additional lessons. In December 2019, a sudden phreatic explosion at White Island in New Zealand killed 22 people. Tourists had been allowed on the volcano, despite elevated unrest. The warning signs were present, but action came too late. At Campi Flagre, the delay between warning and response could prove equally fatal. Despite the gaps, monitoring capabilities are improving. The AI model developed by Stanford and ENGV is now operational at the Vesuvius Observatory. It runs in near real time, distinguishing genuine seismic signals from background noise and mapping the location and magnitude of each event. Italian scientists have integrated the system into their emergency response workflow. The tool has already transformed understanding of the caldera structure. The ring fault encircling the uplift zone, the converging faults beneath Pozzuoli, and the tens of thousands of previously undetected earthquakes are now part of the scientific record. Researchers hope the clearer view will help estimate the range of magnitudes for future quakes and guide urban planning and evacuation efforts. Citizen science is also expanding. A public reporting portal allows residents to log felt earthquakes, providing additional data for the monitoring network. The information helps calibrate instruments and identify areas of concentrated damage. Yet critical gaps remain. Deep borehole strain meters and distributed acoustic sensing systems, tools that could track the shallowest and most dangerous layers of the crust, are not yet in place. The zones closest to the surface remain the least observed. Today, more than half a million people live above a caldera that refuses to rest. The ground rises month after month. Earthquakes arrive in swarms, pounding the same neighborhoods until the shaking blurs into a constant hum. The cap rock that once held back the forces below is fracturing, its strength diminished by repeated stress. Scientists have learned more about Compi Flagre in the past two years than in the previous two decades. They've mapped the ring fault, tracked the deformation, and modeled the pressure dynamics. They've built AI systems that detect four times as many earthquakes as traditional methods. They staged the largest evacuation drill in the region's history. And still, the fundamental question remains unanswered. No one can say whether the unrest will fade, as it did in the 1980s, or accelerate toward an eruption, as it did in 1538. The data show no evidence of magma rising toward the surface, but the absence of a signal is not proof of safety. Phreatic explosions can occur without magmatic precursors. The system is capable of surprise. For the families of Pozzuoli and the surrounding towns, the crisis is measured one tremor, one decision, one day at a time. The volcano beneath their feet has been breathing for 15,000 years. It has never stopped. And the question that hangs over every bulletin, every drill, every cracked wall is simple. When will it exhale?